your name in all the earth. Who have set your glory above the heavens. And out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants you have ordained strength or praise. Because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. Did you know that your praise shuts the enemy up? You've got to have something come out of your mouth to silence your enemy. Hallelujah. So when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man, pardon me, that you would visit him? You have made him a little lower. And the translation here says angels. I'm going to come back and address that in just a moment. And you have crowned him with glory and with honor. You've made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his, not talking about all things under God's feet, all things under man's feet. You have put all things under his feet, sheep, oxen, beasts of the field, birds of the air, fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Father, bless your word tonight in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen together. Amen and amen. Right there in that scripture, it says you made him a little lower than the angels. When they were translating the Bible, anybody who translates knows sometimes that there are things that get lost in translation. <laughs> there are things that may not were said properly or not said with the same emphasis. When they were translating the Bible, those that were translating it knew the implications of that word and they on purpose dumbed that scripture down because the implications were so great. Because it says right there that God has made us a little lower, not than angels, but the word there is Jehovah. Yes, yes, yes. That God actually made man a little lower than himself. So in other words, you have God, you have Adam, you have angels, and then you have Satan when it comes to God's protocol. God did not say that we were made lower than angels. In fact, 1 Corinthians 6 says that we will judge the angels. Uh, Psalm 103 says that you can command the angels and they go on your behalf and they do the word. Hebrews chapter 1 says that they are ministering spirits, that they are to minister and serve on our behalf. There were angels that helped bring you to church tonight. Hallelujah. There were angels that stopped things from happening and you'll never even know that they stopped it from happening. There were angels that kept your children Children. There were angels that caused things to happen for you and you just thought it was coincidence but it was not coincidence. So you got to understand God created angels not to be over you but to minister on your behalf and be servants for mankind in the earth realm. Can I keep preaching? If I can shout amen. All right. So he made man a little lower than himself. So you got to understand that God made man and said you have put him in dominion. I can feel myself getting riled up already. I, he made man and gave him dominion over all of God's stuff. Sometimes, Pastor, we get confused between ownership and control. Ownership and control. Now, when you first get in that building, see, the enemy don't want you to have that building, but what's happening is God is getting your foot in the door, and you're getting your foot in the door by a lease or by rent, okay? When you rent something or you lease it, you don't own it, but you do control it. How many of you have ever rented an apartment or you ever rented a storage building? Okay, when you rent something, you don't own it, but you are in charge of all the activities that take place there. So once you get your foot in there and you begin to lease it, although it may not be yours, you'll control every activity that goes on in that building. I think we need to give God glory for that right there. And see, the enemy's messing up because what he don't know is God's going to give you everywhere you put your... God. So you're getting your foot in there by renting it or leasing it, but once you put your foot on it, hallelujah, you go in there and say, God has given this to generation of faith church and this property will be used to bring people from the north, the south, the east, and the west, and it'll be a place of healing, a place of development, a place where the kingdom expands in the name of Jesus. Somebody who's happy, shout hallelujah. Mm, yeah. Glory, glory, glory. 
So ownership versus control. Ownership versus the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Ownership of earth will never be in question. The Bible says clearly that God created it, God owns it, and all the stuff that is in it, it belongs to God. But the Bible says that the heavens are for God and the earth he has made for the sons of men. So you got to understand when it comes to earth, God owns it, but he wanted somebody else to be in control of it without him having to be there himself. So God made man and put him in dominion over the works of his hands. He said, the earth belongs to me, but I'm going to lease it and I'm going to rent it to you and you be in charge of all the activity that is going on there while you are there. Now, I'm going to mess with your head a little bit. Can I mess with our head a little bit? Because preachers say all the time, well, God is in control. Well, you know that the Lord is in control. and God. Well, the Bible tells me that God owns it. But Psalm 8 tells me we control it. Woo, I don't say I feel it go. I ain't losing all my amens now. By the way, I need to warn y'all, I can spit about four rows. Okay. If it hits you, just leave it there. It'll heal you. It'll heal you. Hallelujah. Like Jesus spit in your eyes. Don't move it. Just let it sit there. Just let it sit there. Okay. Yeah. I forgot what I was saying. Y'all done made me forget. They say God is, is in control. As I read Psalm chapter 8, Pastor Julio, that's, that's not what that Bible tells me. I believe that if the earth gets worse, it's our fault. I believe if things get better, it's our fault. I believe if the kingdom expands, it's because of us. I believe if the kingdom deteriorates, it's because of us. Because I believe God has put us in dominion over the things of the earth. But excuse me if I may think a little too much of God's people, but I believe when we are born again and God's spirit comes to live on the inside of us that we can speak to things and those things change. I believe that I can walk into a room and the whole atmosphere changes just because I walked into the room. I believe I can go to people who don't like me and they have to have faith because God calls them to have favor on me. I believe people who once fought you are going to turn around and help you. Why? Because God has given you favor and turned the hearts of people and given them. I, I believe that God, you're going to see God change and rearrange things that just because you're in the city, things are shifting and moving just because God is establishing you here. Don't you look at just what you can see. You can't see what's happening in the heavens. You can't see what's happening in the heavens right now. There's a reason I'm here to connect to an apostle, to connect to a bishop, to bring another apostle in. And you start bringing all this stuff in the spirit and the heavens begin to open up. And what used to be hard now gets easy. Let everybody that knows God gave you dominion in the earth take 10 seconds and give your God a praise. Hey, 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 five, four, three, two, one, shout hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I got to, I got to keep preaching on so he'll give me my ensalada. Hallelujah. Now. This is good, isn't it? The Bible says that in the beginning God created and he said. God created and he said. He created and he said. When God speaks, God does not speak just to communicate. He speaks to create. The Bible said that the earth was dark without form or void. So when God started talking, he wasn't trying to communicate with darkness. He spoke to create something in the darkness and said, let there be light. And when God spoke, he didn't just communicate with it, but he created and something happened out of his speaking. Catch this very carefully now. So understand, God rules his world with words. 
God rules his world with work. That's how God operates. When God wants a thing, God speaks a thing. Even when God wants something in your life, what does he do? He first speaks it to you, and then it becomes a seed, and you manifest it later. What does he do? He does nothing before he first speaks it to his prophets, the Bible says. So you got to understand when God wants something, he talks to it, and then it happens, okay? When God wants something, oh, can I just keep going here? I don't have to be in a hurry, do you? Y'all done brought me down here. Let me finish this thing. See, and when God wants something, he doesn't speak to what he wants. He speaks to what holds it. God didn't say, let there be fish. He said, let the waters bring forth. In other words, the water held the fish and he told the water, give up what's already on the inside of you. He didn't say let there be grass. He didn't say let there be tomatoes. He didn't say let there be corn. He said let the earth bring forth its seed that is in itself. In other words, he said the ground already has seed. Give up what's already in you. He said let there be stars within the heavens. In other words, he said let the heavens give up what's already on the inside of it. Do you know what he said when he wanted a man? He turned around and looked in the mirror and said let us make man in our image. You didn't come from your mom and dad. You came out of God. You came out of God himself. God made man in his image. So whenever God wants something, he talks. And he talks to what holds it. And then whatever's holding it has to let it go. I'm believing God's going to speak to your spirit. And whatever your spirit's holding tonight, your spirit's going to have to let it go. In the name of Jesus, touch three people and say, tonight it's coming out. It's coming out. Yay. Hallelujah. 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 Yay. Hallelujah. Woo, y'all got to quit. I ain't even got off my first page. Y'all done making me sweat. Hallelujah. Now, so God never intended. Am I doing all right? God never intended for earth, Pastor Julio, to operate outside of heaven's laws. God intended that the earth be governed just like heaven is governed. Okay? Mm. So in other words, God has an invisible world. He's an invisible God. He's spirit. He lives in the heavens he created. But he created a mirror physical world and then looked in the mirror and created a reflection of himself called Adam and said, you live in this one and rule it, and I'll live in this one and rule it. And so, in other words, Adam had to be able to rule in the earth like God ruled in the heaven. So God had to take some of the stuff that was on him and put it on Adam. So God took his own glory and reached down and crowned Adam with honor and with glory. That's what Psalm 8 just said. So he put Adam in the earth and said, now the thing that makes me God, I can talk and something happens. He said, now I'm going to take my glory off of me and put it on you. And when you speak in the earth, things are going to happen and things are going to be created. Now the Bible says, ooh, hallelujah. The Bible says that there were five days of creation But Adam was not yet there, so there were five days that every animal and everything was walking around the earth, and they didn't know what they were. (coughs) They had no identity. You got all the trees, pine tree, leaning over to the palm tree. Who are you, palm tree? I don't know. What are you? What are you? You got the chicken going over to the goat. Who are you? I don't know. Who are you? The goat goes to the giraffe. Who are you? I don't know what I am. What are you? I don't know what I am. What are you? Because the Bible says once Adam came into the earth, whatever he called it. I don't know if they got that or not. Whatever he called it, that's what it was. 
So now when Adam come into the earth, he said, you're a goat and you're a chicken and you're a lamb and you're a giraffe and you're a lion and you're a tiger and you're, you're this and you are that. You're a cow and you are a horse and you're a dog and you're a cat and you're a palm tree and you're a pine tree and you're an oak tree. In other words, he came in and he gave anything it's, everything its identity. Why? Because in the earth, we are supposed to operate just like God ruled in the heavens. Can I just throw it out? God in intended for you to rule your world with your words. God intended for you to be able to speak a thing